President Biden's approval ratings continue to dip as rising consumer prices fuel economic discomfort. A new CBS poll shows just 44 percent of Americans approve of the job he's doing. But as Skylar Henry reports, the president is hoping his pick to lead the Federal Reserve will help build economic stability. A new CBS News poll turned up low numbers and bad political news for President Biden. More than two-thirds of Americans, 67 percent, now disapprove of how the president is handling inflation. Monday, President Biden expressed confidence in positive indicators like falling jobless claims and rising retail sales, but admitted there are challenges. We know it's tough for families to keep up with the rising cost of gasoline, food, housing, and other essentials. The president's advisors hope his social spending bill will bring political and economic relief. We need to move on this Build Back Better bill right now. But opponents say it could have the opposite effect. This idea that this we're going to spend $1.75 trillion, but trust us, it's not going to cost you anything. Nobody buys that. President Biden is looking for stability at the Federal Reserve to continue what he calls remarkable progress emerging from a pandemic recession. Monday, the president nominated Trump appointee Jerome Powell for a second four-year term as Fed chair. We will use our tools both to support the economy in a strong labor market and to prevent higher inflation from becoming entrenched. No easy task with massive supply chain disruptions and the lingering coronavirus pandemic. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. For more, I want to bring in Alex Gangitano. Alex is a White House correspondent for The Hill. Alex, welcome. Thanks so much for being with us. Um, before we talk about the economy, I want to ask you about another topic. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki confirmed that President Biden does intend to run for re-election in 2024. What more can you tell us? Yeah, thanks so much for having me. So what we heard from uh, the White House Press Secretary today was that it's hit the president's intention to run again for a second term in 2024. And this follows a flurry of reports on discussions over whether he should run again or will run again. You know, a lot of that follows speculation around, you know, his age and, of course, his waning popularity um, with the falling poll numbers. And it also follows last week we um, heard Vice President Harris uh, say in an interview that they haven't discussed 2024, and that's amid speculation of if, you know, it would be her on the ballot. So I think Pisaki kind of tried to squash some of those uh, uh, that those rumors running around about if the president will run again. And this is one of the firmest um, indications that we've heard so far at the right White House that he will. All right. On the economy, as we mentioned, President Biden is reappointing Jerome Powell as head of the Federal Reserve. There was some talk he would nominate Democrat Lael Brainard to replace Powell. Instead, he's nominating her for the Fed's number two spot as vice chair. Why did the president ultimately decide to choose Powell for a second term? Yeah, so what we heard from the president today is he was really touting Powell's stability and independence as the chair of, uh, you know, the central bank. And, uh, you know, Powell is, of course, a Republican. A lot of Democrats uh, had to urge the president to not have Powell uh, get another another nod. Uh, he was first nominated by President Trump to run the Fed. And so I think the president also now in a uh, announcing Lael Brenner today to be the vice chair was kind of a nod towards Democrats. She is a um, much more, you know, a, a favorite among liberals, a more progressive pick. So I think having the two of them side by side was the White House trying to say that we heard you, we heard progressives, but uh, Powell is really the person for the job. And a lot of that also comes because of the recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, Powell has been there leading uh, the the recovery efforts throughout this uh, you know year and a half, and so I think the president was wanting that kind of stability as the economy continues to recover. Um, and so you know there's been weeks of of waiting for this nomination announcement to come out and speculation over if it would be Brennard or if it would be Powell. The White House has been really quiet until today on it. Um, but ultimately, that's the insight into why he chose Powell, just to continue on the path to recovery and have somebody who's you know, been familiar and spearheading it from day one. 
Well, as we mentioned, new CBS News polling shows rising inflation is largely harming the president's approval rating. As holiday shopping season gets underway, how critical will consumer habits over these next few weeks be to the president's numbers? I think really critical. I mean, this holiday shopping season will be a major test for the president in his handling of the economy and the rebound. Uh, you know, right now with rising inflation, supply chain crisis, worker shortage, this is all, if that impacts the holiday shopping season, I think a lot of the blame will be placed on the president. And so, you know, the White House has come out and, and tried to squash some of these concerns. Yes, last week we heard them saying that companies like Best Buy, TJ Maxx, Walmart, and Target all have stock shelves and are ready for the holiday season. Well, we're also, you know, hearing concerns from Republicans saying that the president's uh, vaccine mandate for workers in companies of 100 people or more will actually hurt the worker shortage in the country. You know, we're seeing Americans have uh, higher gas prices when they are ready to travel for the holiday season and they're on the move again, unlike last year. So it all kind of comes down to this is this is all uh, going to be an issue for the president if things don't go well, if Americans go to do their holiday shopping and see empty shelves. So I think the, the White House is really uh, preparing, uh, as we've seen, you know, data points come out from them. Uh, they're, parent, they're preparing to push back on this and, and try to take some of the blame away from the president, especially, as you mentioned, his approval ratings are, are hitting a decline right now. So, Alex, with that as the backdrop, President Biden is set to deliver a speech on Tuesday on the economy and lowering prices. So what can we expect from those remarks? You know, it was interesting because when that speech was announced yesterday, everybody thought that would be the Fed chair announcement. And so, of mm -hmm. course, he came out with that this morning. So um, I think it will be a lot on just more touting what he's done to improve the economy. Again, the same points that we've heard out of the White House for weeks, but, you know, more data points about the supply chain crisis, um, you know, more data points about how the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach are running 24-7 you know, now, and if there's less cargo ships uh, waiting or, um, you know, at those ports, or if he has people moving them again, you know, truckers on the move again, um, you know, anything that he can point to actual uh, movement in the supply chain, I think he'll try to do that. Then, of course, I think he's been talking to CEO, CEOs of major companies to see how they're handling preparing for the holiday season. And so he'll want to report some of that back to the American people about whether they are struggling to find workers. You know, there's always an uptick in uh, retailers needing workers around holiday the holiday season. And so what are CEOs actually telling him about if they can recruit and retain talent? So I think he'll have to share that with the American people and try to squash some concerns going into the holiday season about, uh, you know, if we'll be able to, to get the, the gifts and the goods and everything that we want. Meantime, the president and Democrats are hoping their social spending bill will bring some economic relief. And the House passed the measure last week. When can we expect the Senate to take up the bill? That's a good question. You know, uh, when it did pass the House, that really was the first step in a much longer process. Of course, we saw the president uh, celebrate that victory. Speaker Pelosi celebrated that victory, but now it heads to the Senate. And so we'll undergo probably a number of changes in order for the legislation to be able to advance with moderates on board to pass it. And so I think that will be a long process because the amount of changes needed to get Senator Manchin, Senator Sinema on board, uh, it might be tough for, for Democrats to, to get them with how the bill stands right now out of the House. You know, Manchin has still continued to express his concern with the top line number, um, even though that there were huge concessions for him out of it uh, when the White House came out with their, their uh, framework. So uh, that's the next step here. And of course, the party needs all 50 senators to get this uh, on board with this bill for it actually to pass the Senate. So I think there's there's a long road ahead. Uh, you know, there, there was a small victory when it passed last week, but now there's a lot more that needs to be done on this bill. All right, we'll continue to watch it. Alex Gangitano, thanks very much, Alex, for joining us. Thank you.